Hello, I'm Tomasz, uh, and uh, working for Collabora, and I was in recently working for on uh, OpenGL VCL backend, uh, and recently I wanted to improve the performance how OpenGL uh, renders uh, LibreOffice with it. Unfortunately, I don't have any benchmarks or anything, but I just review the, the techniques I use to increase the performance of uh, the rendering. So uh, I checked a little bit inside uh, uh, Git and see when uh, we started to work on uh, VCI OpenGL backend and I saw that the first time it was uh, introduced into code base around 2014 and I think it was already av available in LibreOffice 4.4 as experimental. But it was a really bad shape at that time so I don't think anybody really used it. Uh, LibreOffice 5.1, uh, it was a very good shape. And there was no more uh, rendering uh, bugs or fixed and uh, uh, it was mostly rendered, uh, LibreOffice render, rendered uh, correctly. Uh, the problem was it was not really fast or as fast as uh, as fast as a software renderer so we had to uh, work on it uh, to increase this uh, so usual misconception uh, it's hardware accelerated uh, like OpenGL uh, not really hardware accelerated just a little bit a different uh, we use a different uh, architecture uh, to render, uh, but usually when people think OpenGL is hardware accelerated, it must be fast because they they see the, all these uh, games they, uh, that can play and almost photorealistically uh, present the screen the the, the scene. So for a drawing application like uh, LibreOffice, uh, this should be really, really fast, uh, but it's not so simple. Uh, the problem generally is that rendering with uh, GPU is quite different than just rendering uh, you know, like a software renderer for 2D objects. Uh, one of the problem is that somehow uh, OpenGL when it evolved for 3D rendering, also the API uh, evolved with it to be more uh, friendly for rendering. This was not really true for 2D rendering. We have still, we still use this canvas style rendering which is very, very old uh, style of uh, rendering uh, and has many, many uh, not really uh, good things, uh, not really uh, optimized for uh, GPU rendering. So when, when we are rendering with a GPU, everything, you have to <coughs> render everything with triangles. 3D scenes are mostly always some kind of manipulation of triangles. Uh, so the same thing uh, we have to do it uh, for 2D rendering. OpenGL supports some like GL line, GL uh, for line rendering, but this is not really <laughs> good to use for uh, for many reasons. So. We have to use uh, uh, triangles for this. And the other thing is, there's usually the, the, the canvas style have immediate drawing. This means when when uh, when we say, okay, draw 
this line it is it is immediately drawn to the surface. <coughs> but for GPU, this is not really good. The good thing uh, it likes to wait until uh, as long as possible and flush uh, at uh, at uh, when it draws the whole. Uh, uh, the whole scene, uh, the whole frame at once, uh, because GPU likes to, uh, in OpenGL, they like to uh, change a little bit drawing commands uh, to be more performant or combine them already inside uh, OpenGL. Uh, so second thing is we have in GPU, when you have GPU, you have a GPU memory, local memory, and you have to Upload, uh, upload textures, upload vertices to the, the to the GPU memory before you can draw. This can be quite expensive, uh, and if you have to do it uh, constantly, like in in a Canvas style app API, when you just define, for example, draw line and define coordinates. These coordinates are translated to the vertices, and Every time we have to uh, upload these vertices to the GPU memory, this is can get quite slow if if, uh, if the 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 shape is uh, complex. Uh, but on the other hand, we have programmer rasterization, so we have fragment shaders, uh, and we can do a lot of things with uh, fragment sh shaders very very fast. Um, and we want to exploit this as much as possible. So the performance improvements I made. First, we have native control cache. Native con for native controls, uh, we have to uh, render it uh, to, to a buffer, to, to uh, an image buffer, and upload it to, as a texture to the GPU. Normally, uh, this is not needed uh, in uh, other backends. Uh, they can just draw directly to the surface, uh, and it's quite fast. But here, we have to do this all the time and upload it to the GPU, and it's expensive if you do this each draw, each for each frame that we draw. Uh, so we want to cache it. Luckily, the controls, there are some controls that never change, like checkboxes. Uh, and there are some con other controls that change only when we are resizing. So caching them makes a lot of sense. So we cache the textures, uh, and uh, we have uh, at least recently used cache and just drop them when they are, I don't know, 200 textures. But this can still be improved uh, in various uh, ways. Uh, for example, with a texture atlas, instead to have a lot of textures, we have one big, big texture, uh, uh, which includes many more many images, um, and uh, in this way uh, we decrease the the. Uh, overheads that we have to do when drawing. So one, one problem here is that how to pack more uh, textures that have uh, variable size uh, into one big texture. Uh, there are many uh, algorithms available. Uh, we have two. One simple one is just to divide the texture to equal size. and. Uh, just uh, put the, the, the sub textures uh, in, inside uh, these uh, regions. This is, can be highly dynamic, but space is a lot of space. So uh, it, they, this is currently used for icons which have mostly equal size. And this way we, and if you have a toolbar, we have many of these. Uh, icons, so we sp save some space in this way. But then we come to text rendering. Uh, 
which is quite similar to this. Uh, the problem is with text that uh, there is no support by the GPU for rendering. So we have to render uh, on the CPU and then upload it as a texture. Again, similar like we, for icons. Uh, the problem is that glyphs uh, don't have equal size. So texture atlas is, uh, this simple texture atlas is not enough. So what we do in for texture rendering, one, one, one thing that you can do is just to render it into a, tex uh, into, uh, a texture whole string and then upload each, each draw call and uh, to the texture to the GPU and draw it. But this is quite uh, slow. So what is usually done here is to, to uh, cache the glyphs. Uh, of the text and uh, try to we try to uh, draw individual glyphs uh, as uh, uh, textures in a texture atlas. Usually, this is can be done in one draw call, which is very very uh, fast. So, for example, if you want to uh, draw abracadabra, we have this like this is a texture in. Atlas, which has glyphs A, B, R, C, D, and then in, that, in, in one draw call, we can just uh, modify the coordinates. Okay, A goes in these uh, regions, B goes in these places uh, in the texture, uh, and we can just, in one draw call, we can just uh, render the whole, the whole world. Currently, this is uh, implemented for Windows, but not for Linux. So it's generally still quite, OpenGL is quite slow uh, on Linux. So next thing I did is uh, to decrease, uh, to decrease uh, state changes. So OpenGL is quite interesting implementation. Uh, okay, uh, so OpenGL is quite interesting. You have a lot of uh, things you can enable and disable, like uh, GS scissor test, GS stencil, stencil test, blending, uh, and you usually do this with uh, GL enable, GL disable commands. Uh, but the problem is that OpenGL implementation quite stupid <laughs> uh, in this way. So when you enable, it states, uh, it changes internal states quite uh, immediately. So, and they, uh, OpenGL uh, does internal state change and many things resets. So we don't want to do this if it's not necessary. Uh, so we track state, what's the state of uh, these uh, flags uh, ourselves yeah, and not, we don't use uh, uh, OpenGL to, uh, to fire that state. Uh, the another thing is also for binding, binding the textures. You usually bind the textures to texture units uh, and you don't need to unbind them but when you execute any draw that needs a texture, the texture must be bound to the uh, specific, specific uh, texture, uh, texture unit. Uh, so 
generally we track the states which uh, textures are bound and only bind, rebind the textures if when, when this is necessary. Similar is also for GL viewport, which and a GL scissor, scissor is for clipping and viewport is to define what uh, is the, the, the size of the, of the uh, surface uh, we want to draw in. Next is uh, we can combine the, the shaders. Uh, one problem is uh, if you have a lot of shaders, we have to switch between shaders very often and this is also changing the state and if this is not necessary, uh, again, overhead in OpenGL. So what we did is combine the shaders into one big shader and just switch between what it does inside the shader with if statement. One prob problem is that branching inside shaders is not really recommended <laughs> but it's uh, in the end it was better to to do uh, if statements simply statements or switch statement is a shader uh, it produces less overhead than than uh, using uh, changing the shaders itself The next is uh, polyline uh, drawings. I have the here. Uh, I use these uh, polylines for testing uh, of the implementation. So what a polyline can have is uh, this is usually the Bezier cu curves. Uh, it can be they can be open, they can be closed. Uh, what they have is usually some line endings, line beginnings, are they, are they uh, um, rounded or just square and line joints, these are possible line joints, can be rounded or uh, meter or doesn't, ha or doesn't have any or just bevel shaped. Uh, and with uh, how we did it before is that we decomp decompose this to uh, inside uh, with the CPU to with uh, to tra trapezoids and uh, draw the trapezoids. This was quite expensive, so what I implemented is uh, to do this with the GPU instead. Uh, and. <laughs> What we have to be aware here is that anti-aliasing, we want to do it uh, inside the shader. There's different possibilities like MSAA also, which uses anti-aliasing for everything, but uh, for performance reasons, we just wanted to do it without M MSAA enabled. Uh, so usually this is, uh, as I said, it's for light drawings, but also can be used for poly polygons, uh, mainly outline of poly polygons and polygons, uh, so that they appear anti-aliased. So this is uh, usually how we do it. Uh, we have, if you want to draw it, uh, inside GPU, we have one triangle and second triangle. Uh, we calculate depending on the light line width, uh, the extrusion vector, which is perpendicular to the line. Uh, and the extrusion vector is uh, as big as the line width. To so if you want to have also the anti-aliasing, uh, we half on both sides, we use half filter, uh, half pixel uh, with uh, feather. The feather is just uh, fades the color of the of the line from one to zero on the both sides and this gives the anti-aliasing uh, effect. Okay, next we have is then batching and combining. So we want to decrease the, the, the overhead of the GPU and reduce the number of draw calls. So what we can do here is batch draw 
batch the drawings, draw commands, and reorder them and so combine some of them. Uh, in the current state, we do this for polygons, uh, for rectangles, polylines, and text rendering, but not currently for uh, gradients, and most texture rendering is not uh, batched yet, so we don't have a full batched uh, drawing enabled yet in the, but I think once we have everything batched, the, the, the performance can be improved quite a lot. So what you do with uh, batching, for example, if you want to draw this uh, rectangle and decide two smaller rectangles and two smaller two lines, so we have these draw actions, draw rectangle, rectangle, line, rectangle, line. So first thing, there is an overlap. We have to check uh, the order, how, how the scene is uh, rendered. So first rectangle, which is actually the background, for example, uh, is drawn first and then we can draw everything else. Uh, and none other rectangles and lines don't, don't uh, overlap in this case, so we can proceed uh, with a second drawing. And next, what you do is change the order. So we have now two rect, draw rects, one in another, after another, and two draw lines. So we can combine them and execute them with one draw call. Now we reduced the overheads uh, we from five, how many? We have five draw, uh, five draw calls at the beginning uh, and now we reduce this for to three draw calls, which is quite nice. So, I wanted to mention here is also for a little bit about uh, backend testing. I created a, this uh, program for visual backend testing, which I used for op see to see that OpenGL draws uh, still draws uh, correctly, and. Uh, what the. Uh, and this can be used for uh, a lot of things, not just in OpenGL, for example, uh, uh, to test uh, other backends. Uh, so what the test does itself is dr it draws primitives to the virtual device and checks for pixel matching. But th this cannot be done uh, very exactly. Uh, so we have many uh, three uh, possible uh, uh, states, either the test passes or fails, it's normally, but there's a third one is pa passes with queries, which means that uh, rendering is not totally how it's expected, but uh, it is something that that we know that the backend has problems with, so it still passes, but there are some queries with it. This is especially in OpenGL, sometimes it happens that the first pixel is d uh, isn't drawn because of mismatches <laughs> or, or changes in uh, the backend uh, OpenGL. So I had to invent something like passes with queries. So okay, this is now used can be used for finding rendering bugs in existing backends. Uh, so we can see uh, different how different backends draw, and maybe there are some uh, there are some uh, bugs uh, that needs to fi to be fixed. It would be very helpful for when we got new uh, backends. For example, a cute backend uh, could use these tests to see if rendering uh, is okay or not. Uh, the main purpose of this is then just to 
when the user first time uh, runs the uh, the test uh, the runs uh, LibreOffice. You can test if OpenGL driver misbehaves or if it's okay or not. So we could disable the OpenGL uh, and uh, fall back to uh, the the software to the renderer instead. So future impro improvements. Uh, this is drawing with uh, polygons polygons drawing, uh, so field polygons. Uh, there is a um, possibility to draw them with stencil buffer, but it's quite exp uh, expensive to draw with uh, uh, stencil buffers, so generally this is not implemented. And we rather do it in the CPU for now. Then there's Bezier curves, curves rendering. We could use, for example, a Lublin algorithm. Unfortunately, this is patented uh, and we cannot use it. It's invented by Microsoft and they, I think they use this uh, inside direct 2D quite extensively to accelerate uh, text rendering. Uh, so, the alternative for Bezier curve is to decom do the composition in G geometry shader. Geometry shader can, for two vertices, you can program it so that it creates more vertices in just ideal uh, <laughs> algorithm. Uh, how usually we draw uh, Bezier curves with decomposition. Uh, last but not least is that to make API more GPU friendly. Current, we are currently, the API is still canvas based, so what we really want is something that is more tailored towards uh, GPUs. So this is SceneGraph app API for, uh, to imp implement SceneGraph API for VCL. Uh, there we have a tree of objects and we can instead uh, of draw calls, tree of objects that are persistent uh, between uh, calls and uh, we can optimize them for depending on the rendering target. So for GPU, we can do optimizations. For CPU, can we do different optimizations? Uh, it uses usually the matrix transformations extensively uh, so instead of modifying all the coordinates of uh, either of vertices or of coordinates of 2D uh, draw commands, uh, we use the transformation matrix and in case of GPU, we can just use this uh, inside a vertex shader and it's quite, quite a lot of bet uh, faster. Uh, and we, we, we can extend this to have a separate rendering thread, which is also very, very uh, nice to have so that in normal thread we can, uh, we can uh, prepare uh, for drawing and rendering thread just, rendering thread just uh, draws everything. And this is, what I have. Thank you. <laughs>